Hello everyone, Mr. Crone here to do a quick lesson on hexadecimal number conversions. First thing we need to talk about is what is the hexadecimal number system? Well, the hexadecimal number system is basically the same thing that we do with our decimal or base 10 system. It's just that this has a base of 16 rather than being base 10. If we look at our base 10 number system, we start out with ones, tens, one hundreds, thousands, so on for the bases. And how do we get those? Well, they're just powers of 10. 10 to the 0 is 1. 10 to the 1 is 10. 10 to the 2 is 100. That's how we get those. And we could go the other way if we wanted to with tens, hundred, thousand, so on. In base 16, it's going to be very close, except rather than being bases based upon the powers of 10, they're now based upon powers of 16. The first one will still be 1s, but after that, it's going to be 16s. And then 16 times 16 will give you 256. So that is going to be, well, these are going to be your new bases. And everything is going to be based upon the fact that you have bases that are powers of 16. 16 to the 0 is 1, 16 to the 1 is 16, 16 squared is 256, and we could keep going if we wanted to. Now, the next thing we need to talk about are the numbers that can fit into each place value. Meaning, in base 10, you can fit the numbers 0 through 9 in each place value. If you create the number 256, the 2 goes in the hundreds, 5 goes in the tens, and 6 goes in the ones. Everything's fine. But in hexadecimal, it is much different. Here, you can put the numbers 0 to 15 over each place value. So if you wanted the number 15 to sit right here, you could actually do that. And now you might be thinking, well, how can you possibly do that if it's only going to actually occupy one place value? If you put the number 15 into base 10, the 1 would have to go in the tens, and the 5 would have to go in the ones. That is not the case in base 16. In base 16, you are actually going to use letters to represent numbers. And here are your letters. A is equal to 10, B is equal to 11, so on, the whole way up to F is equal to 15. That means that if you wanted to just represent the number 15 in hexadecimal, the only thing that you would write is an F right here. That is number 15 in hexadecimal system. Now that you have a basic understanding of the hexadecimal system, let's go ahead and do our first conversion. The first conversion that I would like to do is going from base 16 to base 10. And I would like to convert 25 base 16 into something base 10. The only thing that I'm going to do down here is I'll just take a look at my bases. I'll say how many 256's are there? Well, there are none. There are only two place values here. So the 2 goes over the 16 and the 5 goes over the 1's. Now that I've done that, it's a very simple procedure. All I'm going to do is take 2 times 16 and then add it to 5 times 1. The only thing you're doing is taking the number in the place value multiplied by the place value. So I'm just going to take 2 times 16 plus the quantity 5 times 1. Then I can come down here and we'll just simplify. That will give me 32 plus 5 which will give us a final answer of 37. 37 base 10 is equal to 25 base 16. But that last one was a pretty easy example. Let's do a bit more difficult one. Let's take the number A7 in base 16 and I'd like to convert that to a base 10 number. Now again, I'm just going to write out my bases here. A is over the 16s, 7 is over the 1s. Now. Following our simple procedure again, the only thing we're going to do is multiply out. Remember, A is actually 10 in hexadecimal, so it's really going to be 10 times 16 plus 7 times 1. Now I can come down here and simplify. That will give me 160 plus 7. That's going to give us an answer of 167 in base 10. So 167 base 10 is equivalent to A7 in base 16 or the hexadecimal system. All right, we just finished converting from base 16 to base 10. That was the easy direction. Now let's reverse it and we'll convert from base 10 to base 16. First example I'd like to do is the number 50 base 10 and we want to convert that to base 16. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come here down here and start writing out the bases for base 16. Meaning first I have the ones, then one times 16 gives me 16, 16 times 16 gives me 256, and then here I can stop. I'm going to base it upon how large this number is that I'm trying to convert. How many 256's can I pull out of 50? Well, I can't pull any out because 50 is smaller than 256. So I'm actually not even going to use the number 256. Now, the next thing I'm, that I'm going to do is look at our 16's and say, how many 16's can I pull out of 50? Well, I can pull one 16. Two 16's would be 32. I can pull two 16's. 
three sixteens would be 48. I can pull three sixteens. So the maximum amount of sixteens that I can actually take out of 50 is three. Now, we want to keep track of how much we have left to convert down here. So I'm going to do a simple subtraction problem and I'll take 50 minus three times 16 because that's how many 16s we pulled out. And this is really just 50 minus 48, which is going to be equal to two. We have two left over that we need to account for. So now we can just go to our ones and we can place our two there. We can do our final subtraction problem if you like. Two minus two would equal zero. That means we've accounted for everything. And our final answer to our problem is 32 base 16 is equal to 50 base 10. The next example I'd like to do is a bit more difficult. I'd like to convert the number 43 base 10 into base 16. We'll start out with the same exact process as before. We'll write out our bases of 16. It goes 1s, 16s, 256. Again, 256 is too large, so we're not going to use that. 16 will be our largest base. Now I come up here and I say, how many 16s can I pull out of 43? 116 is 16, 2 16s is 32, 3 16s is 48. So 48 is too large. It looks like 2 is going to be the maximum amount that we can pull out. Again, I'm going to come down here and I'll do my subtraction problem and I'll say 43 minus the quantity 2 times 16 is really just going to be 43 minus 32 and that's going to give me 11 left over. Now we have one place value here and we need to account for 11 left over. Here is where we're going to use our letters and we're actually going to have to put the letter B here and that will finish out the problem. So 2B is base 16 is equal to 43 base 10. And now I'd like to do one final example. We're going to take the number 170, base 10, and we're going to convert it to base 16. For the number 170, do the exact same thing as before, write out our bases. Again, it's less than 256, so I'm not going to go any further. Now we need to decide how many 16s I can pull out of 170. Now this number is going to be much larger than before. 10 16s would give us 160. 11 16s would give us 176. So it looks like the maximum number of 16s that we can pull out of 170 is 10. But remember, I can't just put 10 here, we have to use the letters. So I'm actually going to put A in the 16s place. We can come down here and do our subtraction problem. It'll be 170 minus the quantity 10 times 16, which we can simplify to 170 minus 160, and that will give us 10 left over. Now again, we have 10 left over, and we have our ones. We can account for all 10 of those by using the letter A again. So the letter, well, the number AA is going to be equal to 170 in base 10. But that's it for conversions from base 10 to base 16 and base 16 to base 10. Please uh, just leave any comments or questions that you have below and I'll do my best to get back to them. Thanks.